G'day folks, Jason and Nick here from the Utter Farm. It's winter time here in Queensland, or should I say Australia. It was six degrees overnight, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's a good time of the year to catch up some chores that are hard to do during the hot summer months. So today we're going to be correcting, or should I say fixing up our category. It's been a long time coming. I'll give you a look at it, it's pretty, uh, in a sad way, we, normal cars can't go over it. With our four wheel drives, it's not an issue, but we're starting to bottom out too. Once you have a look, you'll understand why we're bottoming out. This is the state of the category at the moment. As you can see, I'm pushing up and down. It's totally rusted off, snapped these bars, and it sagged through the middle. It's 40 year old, the property. We used to know the previous owners. The I-beams through here, the mud under time have started to rust them out. They didn't have a concrete bottom in it, and it's rusted those I-beams out. So we're gonna cut all these bars out, and start the repairs. It's not gonna be a conventional category. It's gonna be different. And as through the process of the day, as I'm cutting it off, I'll explain what I'm doing and the reason why we're not going back to the conventional grid. Removed all those tags now where those pipes come off. Nick's leveled all the set, done a good job. We've got a couple of hundred mil here. Just gonna tidy up this and we'll resume tomorrow. Going into town now to get some pizza and we're gonna spend some time with our grandkids. I think someone was pushing the limits when they went through that. That's a small car, looks like a, I don't know, maybe a laser. Small Ford Festiva, only a small car. It looks like it's a front spoiler. Just down below the headlights there. Obviously they didn't make it through, that was in the bottom of all this mess and we clean it out. I better give Nick a hand otherwise I won't hear the end of it. And we'll continue we'll continue on tomorrow. I've already done all of it anyway. Oh. <laughs> you just pretend to use the shovel at the end of it. That's all the pipes we cut out as you can see they're in a pretty bad state, rusted through, bent, snapped. So we end up cleaning that out yesterday afternoon, like we mentioned. So we're ready for the next step. As you can see, we drop in through here. All that's been ground flush. Well, those rusty pipes were cut off and welded. That way no one stubs their toe as they're walking through here when it's, when it's filled. This is about 200 mil through here, which is about eight inches. So we'll go on to the next step, which is putting this geotextile through the bottom here. In the past, when we used to fill up the dirt roads, every couple of years with dirt, you notice you get those points where they sag down in the soil hollow spots and you come back every couple of years and fill them up. Un unknowns to me, what's happening is you've just got your, your bare soil and as you're driving constantly across adding pressure and weight to those rocks, as it rains and the soil gets wet, you're pushing that rock down through into the soil. And that's why you're getting those hollow spots in your driveway because you're pushing them down further and further into the ground. What geofabric or geotextile does is it adds that barrier of material so it's puncture proof so when you put it down across here the rocks and it sit on top when the cars go across it can't push it down into the dirt you've got that barrier layer so it's at, it acts as a pressure bandage across the surface so 
the more pressure you put on it, it's not going to bury into the dirt. It should stay the same height. So we're going to give it a go. It's the first time I've used it. And it's got an ear. You use it for driveways, paths, retainer walls as drainage. So when you put it, when you have a retainer wall, you put it behind the retainer wall, fill it with rocks, and wrap this back over the top. And then you put your soil over the top of that. So the water runs through, goes through the geotextile into your rocks, then down to an aggie pipe generally. And then aggie pipe then drains out to wherever you want it to go, whether it be the road, the gutter, in your paddock somewhere. And also, oh, that's the same thing, drainage filtration, exactly what I said. We'll go through now and cut this out and put it in. That geotextile has been laid out now, and as you can see, I've got my drain under here where the water runs through and goes underneath this sea channel. I've got to clean out that dirt because that's built up over time with all the rain and washed up and it doesn't drain, so I need to dig that out so it goes down the hill. But I've got some weld mesh here. This is 50 mil by 50 mil or two inch by two inch. The rock I'm getting is 25 by 50. What's that mean is they guarantee the smallest rock is 25 mil or one inch, and the biggest rock is 50 mil or two inch. So what I need to do is stop that flowing out from the end here. So I've got some weld mesh. This will lay up along here. I need to bend it up to shape and put it along here. I've got two of them, so that'll overlap each other. So to make it a 25 by 25 mil square. So none of that rock will go out the end. What I'll do now is I'll cut this and we'll form this up, bend it, and we'll get it in position. Here's a brand new set of bolt cutters. The last set of bolt cutters I had, the teeth were starting to chip on the end. It was cheaper to buy a new set of bolt cutters than it was to buy a new set of teeth or shears for the end. What a consumable world we live in. Throw it away, get a new set. Started bending this one up now. I just marked the height I want along the top here using this timber as a bending gauge. Go along and keep going. Almost 90 degrees it's got to get to. Slip him under there. I'll pull that fabric up later. That one fits up real snug. That's perfect. Hook under there, it can't come out. Go back another inch. That's perfect. I'll bring that felt mat up, textile, hook it over there. I've just got to get that second one bent up now. Almost 100% guarantee I won't get it the same shape. Do the best I can. I'll get it close as I can, and that'll go under there wiring them on, I'm just going to use zip ties. Zip ties under here, under the rock, won't get the sun damage, so they should last many, many, many years. And once the rock's in place, it doesn't matter, it's not going to move anyway. Now that I've got that mesh in position where I want it, and I've zip tied those two together so they can't slip, I want to get these slabs of concrete we took from the outer farm and position them over the tyre tracks down the bottom. Not only it takes up the area, we need less rocks, it also gives it a solid base for when you're driving over it. I'll manhandle them in now and lay them out. got the last of that slab concrete in position where I want it and I've positioned four small sections over that wire there so that doesn't kick up 
when I'm putting rocks in and keeps it down. All I need to do now is order some gravel or sort of say rocks and fill her up. Sweet sound puppies. Well, you don't mind me taping this, Shane. I've got a YouTube channel, so I've just been doing a repair on this. Have you? You don't mind? You've got a YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah, not bad. No, I don't mind, as long as nothing goes wrong. <laughs> That's right, I started recording when you come down the driveway and I said I'd ask you to get out of here. Oh, did you? Did I do alright? <laughs> oh, you will. It's still on. <laughs> and they're reversing. <laughs> oh, I done perfect. <laughs> what do you want to do? Yeah, just go straight in, mate. I'll, um, oh, there's the camera there. Yeah, I'll just pin that up a little bit. I'm sure it's going to come this way. Pin what up? Oh, this mat. Then I'll, I'll, when you dump it out, I'll just get a shovel and throw a few scoops against that so it doesn't Oh, right, out. yeah, yeah. And the same on the other side. I'm assuming it's going to come this way before it goes that way. But... Yeah, well, you just tell me when. Yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. I've well, done my calculations and this come up as 1.15 cubes so it's pretty hard for them to calculate that considering their buckets like half a cubic meter so they just went 1.25 cubic meters hopefully I should have enough there's a fair few rocks there so I'll just spread it out now and see how we go Probably a few of you thinking, why didn't he go a conventional grid? All these steel posts you see, the corners, here are all welded to I-beams right round. And the whole fence is welded. It was hard to get this grid out to replace it with another grid. I could have went bales across the top, but it had no concrete underneath. I would have had to put reinforcing RHS RH sections, I-beams, through the centre to support it. Rather do that. I just went straight to the rocks. You're probably thinking the cows are going to walk straight over it. Since I've been doing cell grazing and using a single hot wire, the cattle don't go through a single hot wire. And I found when this grid was sagged with those bars, that hot wire, even though it's not electrified, the cows weren't going through it. So I don't need to put the cattle grid back with the bars across it. That wire is suffice, and that's why I went that way. I'll take you in for a closer look now it's finished. The reason I went with rocks and not concrete is because that white pipe you would have seen in there before I put the rocks in was a drain from the paddock, overflow drain. So it got too, got too wet in the paddocks, the water would flow out that pipe and down through there. Hence why I went rock. The, the water can drain through there and also if the water's running down the road or up or down this road, it can fall straight into that grid and go straight to the bottom onto that geofabric those rocks allow the water to go straight through 
and then it goes straight over there. That's where I've got to dig out that drain because it's all raised with dirt over the years. And the water will flow down and freely into that paddock. That's the finished product. I've got some chores to do now. I've got to move the girls into the next cell. And then go up, cut some firewood, sit in front of, relax with Nicole in front of the fire and have some chocolate and some red wine. Have a good morning, have a great afternoon and a terrific evening guys, wherever you're watching us from, and we'll catch you later.